good day to all today we learn about transport layer our goals are understand the principles behind transport layer services these are multiplexing and demultiplexing reliable data transfer flow control congestion control in the uh, transport layer protocols are udp user diagram protocol tcp transmission control protocol tcp congestion control This lecture outlines are transport layer services on multiplexing and demultiplexing, connectionless transport, principles of reliable data tra transfer, connection oriented transport TCP, principles of congestion control and TCP congestion control. Transport services and protocols provide logical communication between app processors running on different hosts. Transport products run in in systems. Send side breaks app message into segments passes to the network layer. As if it, uh, that means receiver side reassembles the segments into messages and passes to the application layer. More than one transport protocol available to apps. In internet, TCP and UDP, transmission control protocol and user datagram protocol. Transport layer versus network layer. Network layer is connect communication between hosts. The transport layer is a logical connection between processes lies on enhanced network layer services. Internet transport layer protocols is reliable in order delivery in transmission control protocol that features are congestion control, flow control, connection setups. Unreliable unordered delivery in user datagram protocol EDP. No frills extension of best effort IP. Services not available in this are delay guarantees and bandwidth guarantees. In next slide, multiplexing or demultiplexing. Multiplexing at center side. Multiplexing means handle the data from multiple sockets, add transport layer headers. In demultiplexing at receiver side, use header into delivery received segments to correct the sockets. Then, how the demultiplexing works? Host receives IP datagram. First one, each datagram has a source IP address and destination IP address. Each datagram carries one transport seg layer segment. Each segment has a source destination port number. This is the TCP UDP segment format, a source port and destination port, totally 32 bits, then header field, then payload. Host uses IP addresses and port numbers to direct segment to appropriate socket. Then we move to connectionless demultiplexing. UDP socket identified two double destination address, destination port number. When host receive UDP segment, checks destination port number in segments, direct UDP segments to socket with that port number. IP datagrams with different source IP address and are source port numbers direct to same socket. This is the example for connectionless demultiplexing. Next, connection oriented demultiplexing. In connection oriented demultiplexing, TCP socket identify four double source IP address, source port number, destination IP address, destination port number. In demultiplexing, receiver uses all four values to direct the segment to appropriate socket. Four segments are source IP address, source port number, destination IP address, destination port numbers. These are server host may support many simultaneous TCP sockets. Each socket identified its own four doubles. Web server have a different sockets for each connecting client. Non-persistent HTTP will have a different socket for each request. This is the example for connection oriented demultiplexing. In this, hope IP address communicated with hope IP address A connected with C. Then, this is user datagram protocol. User datagram protocol is no frills, bare bones, internet transport protocol. 
this is also known as best effort service UDP segments may be lost or delivery out of order to app user datagram protocol is a connectionless service there is no handshaking between UDP center and receiver each UDP segment handled independently of each other this user datagram protocol uses for streaming multimedia apps DNS and SNP reliable transfer over UDP is add reliability at application layer application specific error recovery and this side we know about UDP segment header in this header source port and destination port then length of length field in bytes of UDP segments including header then check checksum for error correction purpose then payload why there is a UDP no connection establishment which can add delay simple no connection state at center receiver small header size no congestion control UDP can blast away as fast as desired then what is meant by UDP checksum checksum which detects the error in transmitted segments in center side transmitter segments content including header fields as a sequence of 16 bit integers in checksum addition of segments added in the data once complement of sums center put checksum value into UDP checksum field in receiver side compute checksum of received segment check if computed checksum equals checksum field value no error detected yes means no error detected no means error detected but maybe error nothingness more later this is the example for checksum uh, 16 bit integer uh, consider it as a triple one zero zero one one zero zero one one zero zero one one zero zero then another two one one zero next to 16 bit integer number add the those then take ones complement with this checksum is zero one zip triple zero one triple zero one four zero 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 one one What's the principles of reliable data transfer? Which is the most important parameter in data transfer? So important in application transport link layers. Characteristics of unreliable channel will determine the complexity of reliable data transfer protocol. In this sending process and receiving process connected with the reliable channel. Characteristics of unreliable channel will determine the complexity of the reliable data transfer protocol. In this transport layer and application layer, sending process of data sent to the reliable channel and received by the receiving side. In this reliable data, sending between the packets through the unreliable channel means the unreliable channel will determine the complexity. So reliable data transfer getting started. So RTT send called from above passed data delivered to the receiver upper layer. Then UDT send means called by receiver side to transfer packet over the unreliable channel to receiver. Deliver data called by the RTT to deliver a data to upper layer. Then RTT receiving means a called from below when packet arrives. Incrementally, developers send to receive sites of reliable data transfer protocol consider only unidirectional data transfer, but to control if will follow on both directions. Use finite state machines to specify the sender and receiver. State means next set uniquely determined by the next event. State 1 and state 2 communicating with each other, even causing state transition, action take on the state transition. Then RTT 2.0 FSM specification. In the sender, wait for the call from above, then receive the data, then transmit to the receiver side and waiting for the acknowledgement. If acknowledgement received means reliably data 
transferred. If NAK no acknowledgement received means the packet is lost in somewhere. What happens if ACK or NSK corrupted? If the ACK acknowledgement or non acknowledgement is corrupted, means sender does not know what happened at the receiver. How did we deal with the corrupted data? Check some data, acknowledgement the data, retransmit the data. Sender retransmit the packet for the particular time limit. If the time limit acknowledgement is not received, means sender retransmit the packet again to the receiver in the same channel. Then, yeah, non acknowledgement free protocol. Using an acknowledgement only in RTT. Instead of an act, a receiver sends a ACK for last packet, received is OK. Receiver must accept its including the sequence number. Of the packet being acknowledged. Duplicate ACK at render result in same action as a NEK. Retransmit the current packet again. Then we go for the error correction and detection. Channels with errors and loss means the assumption or underlying a channel can also lose packets, a data or acknowledgement. It contains checksum, sequence number, acknowledgement. Retransmission will be helped. Approaches are senders wait for a reasonable amount of time for ACK. Retransmit if no acknowledgement received in this time requires countdown timer. If the packet just delayed means a retransmission will be duplicated. This is the example for a sender side. So look in this picture, sender first send the packet of 0, packet 0 to the receiver side, the sender send the acknowledgement to the sender. Then uh, acknowledgement received means packet 1 sent to the receiver, but acknowledgement 2 not yet received, it getting lost. Time out means sender retransmit the packet 1 to the receiver and send the acknowledgement of 1. Receiver of acknowledgement 1 received means the next packet delivered to the receiver. Next we go to the stop and wait operation. In stop and wait operation, sender wait for the particular time and then um, if the packet acknowledgement received means it transmit the next packet or else it transmit the same packet to the receiver set. First packet transmitted t is equal to 0 at the time. First packet received means last bit arrivals are sent to the acknowledgement. Okay. Increase the utilization. In this picture, at the time, transmit the three packets to the receiver side. First packet arrives and last bit of the arrives sent to the ACK. Then last bit of second packet sent to the ACK. Then third ACK. Then next our next three packets are transmitted between sender to receiver. Then utilization is known as 3L by R divided by RTT plus L by R. In pipeline protocols, sender allows multiple in flight yet to be acknowledged packets. Range of sequence numbers must be increased, buffering at sender and our receiver. Two generic forms of pipeline protocols are go back and selective repeat. This protocols we will see in the next slides. In stop and wait protocol is the operation like this. A pipeline protocol operation is like this. Okay. Pipeline protocols overview. There are two protocols go back and selective repeat. In go back and center can have the n number of unacknowledgement packets in a pipeline. A receiver only sends a cumulative acknowledgement, doesn't acknowledgement packet if there is a gap. Receiver sends individual acknowledgement for each packet. 
sender has a timer for oldest acknowledgement packet when the timer expires means retransmit all acknowledgement and acknowledged packets to the receiver in a selective repeat mode sender can have up to n acknowledgement packets in a pipeline the receiver sends a individual acknowledgement for each packet sender maintains timer each unacknowledged packet when the time expires retransmit only the unacknowledged packets okay so we go to go back in sender so in go back in k number of sequenced packet header this is known as a window in this window size is n means this packets are good going to transmit from sender side to receiver side this is the send base and next two transmit packets are there uh, in green color we mentioned the already acknowledged packets and the blue use for usable not yet send yellow means send but not yet acknowledged then white means not usable acknowledgement all packets of including sequence number cumulative acknowledgement is received timer for oldest in flight unpacked means time out retransmit the packet of n and all higher sequence packets in the window so example if we transmit the packet up to 5 and receive the acknowledgement of 5 next we transmit the 6 to 10 packets from sender to receiver but the seventh number of the packet last and that acknowledgement is lost means the sender expire the timer means it retransmit the all 6 to 10 packets to the receiver side this is the drawback of go back and protocol then next protocol is selective repeat selective repeat protocol uh, go back and protocol major disadvantages if the some acknowledgement data is there means it transmit the whole window packets in the selective repeat just defer from go back in receiver individually acknowledge all correctly received packets buffer packets are needed for eventually in order delivery to upper layer sender only resends the packet from which acknowledgement is not received it means if the seventh packet is unacknowledged means if the sender retransmit the seventh packet to the receiver not the 6 to 10 packets sender window is n consecutive sequence limits between sequence numbers of send in the selective repeat if the next available sequence number in window time out means resend the packet of n uh, restart the timer acknowledgement mark the packet n has received n smallest unacknowledged packet advanced window base into next unacknowledged sequence in the receiver side send the acknowledgement number of n out of order means buffer in order means delivered buffer in order advanced to next not yet received the packet this is the example for selective repeat if the sender transmit the packet 0 1 and 3 the receiver give the acknowledgement for packet 0 packet 1 and packet 3 but the packet 2 is lost then packet record of pack acknowledgement 3 is not yet received so the sender send the packet 2 to the receiver and receive the acknowledgement for the packet 2 this is the example for selective repeat protocol then transmission line transmission control protocol overview sir we complete the point to point between the users and this is a reliable in order by dream pipeline pipeline to tcp connection and flow control set window size full duplex data the data are transmitted between both bidirectional connection oriented which means handshaking exchange of control messages in its sender receiver stage before the data exchange and the tcp next point is flow controlled sender will overwhelmed of the receiver and this is the tcp segment 
structure. TCP segment structures are URG, urgent data, generally is not used and this is the source ports and this is destination port. Then sequence number acknowledgement for the particular data. Then PSH means push data now and RST means reset a synchronization of in this is the flags. Then this is the payload. Then what is bit TCP sequence numbers and acknowledgement? Sequence number means a byte stream number of twice the byte in the segments is segments data. Outgoing segment from sender. And this is the sequence number. But what is acknowledgement? Sequence of next byte expected from other side. A cumulative acknowledgement will receive. Then next we go for another topic a round trip and time out. TCP round trip time comma time out. How to set a TCP time out value? A too short, a premature time short, unnecessary retransmission. If too long means slow reaction to segment loss. Okay, how to set a TCP timeout value? Already we discussed premature timeout, unnecessary retransmission, and avoid slow reaction to segments longer than the RTT round trip time. How to estimate RTT? Measure the time from segment transmission until ACK receipt. Ignore the retransmissions and sample RTT will vary for estimated RTT. Average so several recent measurement, not just the current sample RTT. Then RCP round trip time and timeout means R estimated RTT is equal to 1 minus alpha into estimated RTT plus alpha into sample RTT. The typical value of alpha is equal to 0 0.125. This is the round trip time and timeout diagram. Then we recall the reliable data transfer of TCP using the pipeline segments, accumulative acknowledgement and single retransmission timers. In the tree transmer triggered by timeout events and duplicate ACKs. TCP senders simplified in the terms. A is a next sequence and initialize the sequence number. Send base and initialize the sequence number. Then the data transfer from sender to receiver and wait for the moment and receive the acknowledgement for the data. Then retransmit the next packet. But the acknowledgement is not received means timer expired. Condition is available means the sender retransmit the packet from sender to receiver again. Then the TCP sender events are data received from app. Which means create a segment with sequence number. Sequence number is a byte stream of number of first byte in segment. Start timer if not already running. Think of timer as for oldest unlocked statement. Expiry session interval, timeout interval. Timeout means retransmit segment that caused timeout. Then again start the timer. Acknowledge the receiver means if the acknowledgement of the previously segment is unacknowledged segment means update what is known to be acknowledged restart the timer if they are still acknowledged for the segments and this is the exam for retransmission scenario if a send the sequence number of 90 to 8 bits of data but the host ack 100 is lost so the timeout means host A retransmit the sequence number of 92 to the transmitter. Okay. Reliable data transfer or similarity unique in TCP also unique in TCP. 
So similarity. What is the similarity in TCP, RTT and GPN? We'll go back and unreliable tender transfer. Pipeline the segments. Cumulative acknowledgement. Single retransmission timer. Retransmission on time mode. What is the unique in TCP? Time interval well defined. Only new ACK refresh the timer. Also unique in TCP or GPN. Retransmit only one. Uh, retransmission only one segment. Sending to equal to one segment. Timeout interval doubled means exponentially slow in case of back to back timeout events. Then acknowledgement generation. Event at a transmitter site and receiver action. First arrival in order of segment with expected sequence number. All the data up to expected sequence are already acknowledged. Next, arrival of in order segment with expected sequence number. One other segment has acknowledged bending. Arrival of out of order segments higher than expect sequence. Gap detect. Arrival of segment that partially or completely fills gap. So next topic is TCP flow control. So what is mean by flow control? Receiver controls the center. So the center won't overflow the receiver's buffer by transmitting too much or too fast. So application process TCP socket or receiver buffers and TCP code from sender. So in this sender we are We determine the data of the buffer by the receiver's capability. Then only we control the flow of data without loss. Receiver advises advertised free buffer space by including R duplicate value in the TCP header of receiver to tender the receiver segment. RCV buffer RCV buffer. This and this field mentions the size of the socket in receiver side. Then the sender limits the unacknowledged packet data using SRWND values, which guarantees the receiver of buffer will not get overflowed. Then, what is connection management? So, connection management before exchanging data from sender to receiver, handshaking concept is available which agrees to establish the connection between each knowing the other willing to establish the connections then this is the three way handshake first initializing the sequence and they are transferring the data from one sender to receiver then received the data means which gives the uh, closing request then end up the connections this is known as three-way handshaking in the closing of connection client server each close the side of connections send the TCP segment with fin finish fin bit as a one respond to receive a fin with acknowledgement on receiving fin acknowledgement can be combined with own fin simultaneously fin exchange can be handled then closing of connection. The fin one is received from sender to receiver. Then acknowledgement for the bit. Then fin one is received from receiver to sender. Then the connections are closed. Then next next features principles of congestion control in transmission control protocol. What is by congestion? Too many sources sending too much data too fast for the network to handle. Different from flow control. Manifestations are low packets and long delays. Low packets means buffer overflow at routers and long delay means queuing in router buffers. Cause and cause of congestions. Two senders and two receivers. Output capacity are R. Then one router, infinite buffers, one router and infinite buffers. So no bit error, no retransmission will be available. 
and then one router having a finite buffers send that read transmission of time out packets then application layer of input equal to application layer of output and mention as a transport layer inputs include the read transmissions okay cause and effect of the congestion if the input side of the center increasing means as a rate of alpha in increases all arriving blue packets at upper queue are dropped blue throughout the zero what is the approaches for congestion control there are two types end to end system and network assisted system in the end to end system in further congestions from the observed loss and delay no expected feedback from network in the end system infer available and rate or bandwidth for by trying and failing in the network assisted mode routers provide a feedback to end system and that's are from observed queue size were free buffer space a single bit in packet indicating the congestion between the servers then example tcp ip in the network assisted routers tell explicit explicit rate the sender sends at the rate cwnd is the dynamic functions of received network congestion and tcp sending means sending a command bytes wait the round trip time for the ack and then the send another command bytes in the tcp detecting and the reacting to losses how it happen if the loss indicated by timeout counts at to 1 millisecond windows then grows exponentially to the threshold limit losses indicated by three duplicate acks duplicate acks indicate the network capable of delivering some segments this is the summary for tcp connection congestion control first a will slow start the transmission process then command is equal to 1 mms then duplicate ack count is 0 then a start the transferring to b new ack is received duplicate ack count is 0 next the receiver receive the segment means new ack received and the duplicate ack count is 0 if the a rush up the transmission means congestion will occurred in the buffer then congestion will be occurred means a data will lost or ack will lost which destroy the communication between server and receiver so tcp throughput with loss average of tcp throughput as a function of window size or rtt ignore the slow start assume the always data to send w means window size measured in bytes where the losses were occurred average of window size is 3 by 4th of the total width average of throughput is 3 by 4th of width per rtt why is the tcp is fair two competing sessions additive increases give the slope of one as a throughput increasing multiplicative decrease decreases the throughput proportionally the loss decrease the window by factor of 2 congestion avoidance will additive increased if the loss decrease the window by factor of 2 congestion avoidance additive increase will be reduced then continue with the tcp fairnesses Multi- multimedia apps often do not use tcp it do not want to rate trolled by congestion control instead of use of udp send audio or video at constant rate tolerate the packet losses then the parallel tcp connection fairness a application can open multiple parallel connection between two hosts web browsers also do this 
examples are link of rate or with nine existing connections then explicit the congestion notification in the network assisted congestion control receiver sets the ec bits on the receiver to sender acknowledgement segment to notify center of congestions sender sets the cwr bit on the sender to receive the data segment to confirm the cwn being reduced then we move to next chapter medium access control protocols in this medium access control protocol first we know about aloga wireless link to provide data transfer between main campus and remote campus of university it's a simple situation is a station transmit whenever it has to transfer data from one place to another place if more than one frames are transmitted means they interface with each other and they are lost if acknowledgement not received within the time mode then the station picks the random back of time station retransmit the frame after the back of time in this aloga model s is a consider for frame transmission time s consider for throughput and g consider for load and p success means probability of frame transmission is successful and throughput of aloga in this aloga collisions are means for coordinating access and maximum throughput is 1 by 2 e power 18.4 percentage bimodal behaviors are s is less than or equal to g collision can snowball and drop out to zero and the next protocol is slotted aloga in the slotted aloga time is slotted in x section slots stations are synchronized to the frame times stations transmits frame with first slot after the frame arrival back of intervals in multiple of slots only one frame that arrive during the prior of x seconds collide and then throughput of the slotted aloha is lambda t whole power k divided by k percentage of e power minus lambda into t application of slotted aloha reservation protocol allows a large number of stations with infrequent traffic to reserve slots to transmit their frames in future cycles each cycle has a mini slots allocated for making reservation stations use slotted aloha during mini slots then next protocol carry sensing multiple access a station senses the channel before it trans it starts transmission if the channel is busy either wait or schedule to back off if ideal means start the transmission vulnerable period means vulnerable period it reduced to t prop due to channel capture effect collision in aloha or slotted aloha involve two or one frame transmission times of x so in the csma there are three types one persistent csma non persistent csma p persistent csma one persistent csma start transmission as soon as possible the channel becomes ideal this is the low delay and high collision rates in non persistent csma wait a back off period and then sense the carrier again high delay and low collision rates will arrive p persistent csma means wait till the channel becomes ideal and transmit with the probability of p or wait for another t probability and d sense the channel with the probability of 1 minus b delay and collision rates can be balanced this is the one persistent csma which is better than aloga and slotted aloga for small alpha csma with collision detection csma cd which monitor for collision and about the transmission stations with frames to send first to carry sensing after beginning of transmission station continuously listening to the medium to detect the collisions if collisions detected all station involved 
to stop the transmission, reschedule the random back of times and try again at the scheduled time. In CSMA collision result, waste of X seconds when transmitting an entire frame. In CSMA CD, reduces waste stage to time to detect collision and about the transmission. In the CSMA CD, reaction times are A begins at T0 and B begins at T is equal to T probability minus delta. B detects the collision means T is equal to T probability. A collision detects means 2 into T probability minus delta. In the CSME CD model, we assumed that collision can be detected and resolved in two times of probability. Time slotted in two times of probability slots during the condition protocol periods assume n by c stations are available and each may transmit with probability of p in each condition time slot. Once the condition period is over, a station successfully occupies the channel. If it takes x seconds for a frame to transmit, it takes t probability before the next condition period starts. If the busy is anonymous, it wait for the particular period, then condition will be available. Then busy for the next particular time period, then the channel becomes ideal means the condition will be available. Then CSMACD throughput. A maximum throughput system alternates between conduction periods and the frame transmission time. This R means bits, of bits per second, L means bits per frame, X means L by R seconds of frame. Alpha is equal to T probability divided by X and V means meter per second, other speed of light in a medium and D is the meter in diameter of the system. Then, carrier sensing and priority transmission. Certain application we require the faster response of others. Example, acknowledgement message impose different interframe times. This priority mechanism we is used in IEEE 802.1 wireless LANs. CSMA CD applications are in Ethernet. Then scheduling for medium access control. Schedule the frame transmission to avoid collusion in shared medium. More efficient in channel utilization, less, less variability in delays can provide fairness to stations. Two main approaches are reservation basis and then polling basis. In this reservation system, the reservation travels our means the next we transmit the packets. Transmission organized into two cycles, reservation interval plus frame transmission. The reservation intervals has a mini slot for each station to request the reservation for frame transmission. And this is the example for reservation basis. Then initially 3 and 5 having a reservation to transmit the frame. A station 8 becomes active and makes the reservation. Cycle now includes the transmission from station 8. 3, 5, next 3, 5. Next to 3 5, but the system 8 has initialized the reservation. Then next to slot 3 5 8 will transmit the data in this channel. And next polling system. In the centralized polling system, a central controller transmit the polling message to the stations according to a certain order. Distributed polling system means a permit for frame transmission is passed from station to station according to a certain order a signaling procedure exists for setting up the order in this polling system the central controller will process the token to the particular system which will transmit the data in the channel polling system options are service will be limited and priority mechanism will service limits means until the station data buffer is empty all the data in buffer when poles are arrived frames are limited and time is limited more bandwidth and lower delay for stations that appear multiple times in the polling list issues poles for station with the message of priority k or high then walk time and cycle time 
in the polling system we assume that polling always is in round robin method time is wasted in polling stations time to prepare and sending a polling message time for station to respond walk time means from when station completes transmission to when next station begins transmission walk time means from when station completes transmission to when the next station begins to transmission cycle time means between the consecutive poles of the station average of cycle time your station empty the buffers then cycle time means number of frames transmitted from station time to empty the one station buffer efficiency of the polling system exhaustive service cycle time increases as the traffic increases so delay becomes very large walk time per cycle becomes negligible compared to cycle time limited services are many application can't tolerate extremely long delays time or transmission per stations are limited this limits the cycle time and hence delay efficiency of 100% is not possible and the token passing of ring this is also known as polling system the token will passing from one person to another person the frame delimiter is taken from if the data is busy means zero or free means zero busy means one will set for the token methods of token reinsertion there are three methods multiple token operation single token operation single frame operation in multiple token operation free token transmitted immediately after the last bit of data frames in single token operation free token inserted after a last bit of the busy token is received back transmission time at least a ring latency if the frame time is longer than ring latency in single frame operation free token inserted after transmitting station has received the last bits of frame equivalent to attaching trailer uh, equal to ring latency and this is the example if the busy token means wait for the ideal then and then while it call for free token it means channel is ideal token ring throughput or uh, to means ring latency x means maximum frame transmission time allowed per the station applications are single frame insertion in token ring local lan the single token reinsertion multiple token reinsertion all of these lands incorporate token priority mechanism then comparison of mac approaches there are analogo and slotted analogo which is simple and quite transfer at the very low load accommodate a large number of low traffic bursty users highly variable delay at moderate loads efficiency does not depend on alpha in the csma cd quick transfer high efficiency for low delay bandwidth products can accommodate a large number of bursty users variable and unpredictable delay then in reservation method on demand transmission of bursty or steady streams accommodates a large number of low traffic users with the slotted analogo reservation incorporates the quality of services handle a large delay bandwidth products by a delayed grants in this polling method generalization of time division multiplexing mode provides fairness through regular access opportunities which can provide bonds on access delay performance detrides with large delay bandwidth products then why we go for channelization Channelization means semi-static bandwidth allocation of portions of shared medium to given users. Highly efficient for constant bitrate traffic bank. Preferred approach in cellular telephone networks and satellite broadcast radio, television, etc. Channelization approaches are three modes. Frequency, frequency division multiple access, FDMA. time division multiple access tdma co division multiple access tdma 
in the frequency division multiple access frequency band allocated to the users which is used in broadcast radio tv analog cell phones in time division multiple access method period time slots allocated to the users example telephone backbone gsm digital cellular phones code division multiple access code is allocated to the users to use the channel example cellular phones and 3g cellulars and this is the image for frequency division multiple access we divide the channel into m frequency bands and each frequency bands are separated using god bands to avoid interference each station transmit and listen on assigned bands each station transmit at most r by m bits per second good for stream traffic used in connection oriented systems then channelization in tdme dedicate one slot per station in transmission cycle stations transmit data burst at the full channel bandwidth each station transmit r bits per second 1 by m of the time excellent for stream traffic used in connection oriented system inefficient for burst traffic due to unused dedicated slots this is the major disadvantage of tdme god bands what is my god band which avoid the interference in ftme frequency band must be non overlapping into prevent interference god bands ensure the separation form of overhead in tdme stations must be synchronized to common clock time gaps between transmission burst from different stations to prevent collisions form of overhead must take into account propagation delays code division multiple access stations transmit over entire frequency band all of time so channelization in cdma channels are determined by the code used by the modulation and demodulation techniques stations transmit over entire frequency and band of all times in the cdma spread the spread the spectrum signals are away transmitted from one users if the used information is mapped between plus 1 or minus 1 for t seconds modulated the spread signal by sinusoidal at appropriate frequency of carrier in the cdma demodulation recover the spread spectrum signal and synchronize to multiple spread signal by same pseudo random binary pattern used at the transmitter side in the transmitter side resulting of spread spectrum signal occupies the g times more than the bandwidth modulated with pseudo random technique in the demodulation demoted the same pattern of the pseudo random binary pattern then pseudo random band generated and this g of x is equal to pseudo random generation of x the coefficient of the primitive is generator polynomial determine the feedback tapes channelization in code space each channel uses a different pseudo random code should have a low cross correlation if they differ in approximately half the bits the correlation between codes is close to zero and the effect at the output of each other's receiver is small as number of users increases effect of other users on a given receiver increases as a additive noise cdma has a gradual increase in bit error rate br means bit error rate due to noise as a number of users is increased interference between channels can be eliminated if codes are selected so they are orthogonal and if receivers and transmitters are synchronized and cdma with the three uses minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 transmitted along to the receiver then next use the next use when multiplexed with the orthogonal codes and received to the receiver side and then in the receiver side each receiver takes the sum of signal and integrated by the code of sequence of the desired transmitter integrate over the t seconds to smooth out the noises and this is the example for the decoding of receiver 
and what is waltz function waltz function provide orthogonal co sequence by mapping 0 to 1 and 1 to plus 1 minus 1 to plus 1 Next, we go for a routing. So, what is meant by routing? Routing means determine the good path or sequence of routers through the network from source to destination. And routing is finding the best path in the network. The graph of fraction, this is are the nodes and edges. Routing algorithm classification. The global are decentralized information static or dynamic uh, in the global means it's a link state algorithm decentralized means a distance vector algorithm then static routing and dynamic routing static routing means route changes slowly over a time and dynamic routing means routers can change more quickly periodic updated in the tables we saw one and one one by one in the next slides so link state algorithm which is depends on the distress algorithm. We saw the example first. So first A only A step 1 consider this is a A A distance between A to B A to B is a distance is 2 and nearest node is A then A to D so, A to D distance is 1 and next to node is A. Then, A to C. So, A to C next to node is B and then total distance is 5. Okay, C. Next, E. E means this and f means this next so next step a will read the full routing table of d then a table will updated with d this is in digital algorithm through the d a will send the data to the f also through the B also, A can transmit through the F. But in the link state routing, we consider the cost of the path. Which one is suitable for the routing? We will choose that path. Distance vector routing algorithm. Each router starts with a distance table consisting of the value 0. If the value is infinity means for other destination, each router will retransmit the distance vector. Each of its neighbors, whenever the information changes, means updated in the routing table. Then, what is the problem in this distance vector routing? If A knows the B routing table, but B knows the C routing table. But the C node is failure means if other nodes can't be communicating with a and b without knowing the information of c is lost a and b continuously sharing with c which is known as count to infinity so comparison between a link state and this is uh, distance vector routing is in link state with n nodes and e links Messages sent to each other. In distance vector, exchanges between only a neighbors. In the speed, link state algorithm requires n into 2 messages may have a oscillation. In distance vector, conversion times varies. Maybe routing loops, count infinity problems will occur. In robustness, link state node can advertise incorrect link cause. Each node computes only its own table. Distance vector node can advertise the incorrect path cast each node's table used by others. In summary of this routing, LS and DV are representative 
they are other type of routing algorithm especially in circuit switching world most of the internet protocols are based on the fundamental algorithm we introduced that and open source and broad gateway protocol are based on the these fundamentals algorithm then OSPF based on link state and broad gateway based on the distance vector routing 